Olivia is back from London. Spencer is performing at his peak, and Jordan is still jealous. What's good, y'all? She gets this Erica Vane coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another All American video. And in this one, I'm doing a breakdown for season six, episode number one, the premiere episode. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my All American content and conversations. But if you're not new, welcome back, boo. You know how we do. And we're gonna go ahead and jump right on into it. So this episode finds us a year and three three months after the season finale of season five. And in all honest, I really believe that the time jump is a disservice for every character except for Olivia Baker's. The Olivia Baker character is going to stand to benefit the most from us skipping an entire year of their lives and us just alluding to what happened or being able to be caught up via dialogue of what happened in the last year since we last saw them. Um, a prime example of this for me is the Patience character. I think that her storyline around Miko, them potentially going to trial when we first see uh, her and get an update about what happened and, and and how she survived one it's all via dialogue but we're also getting a newscast that says that they're going to throw out the ring footage um because of a broken chain of command within the police department and how they were handling the investigation and it really kind of robs the audience of how patients actually survive we do get coop saying you know she actually found her but we don't actually have that visual to tie to that we know that patients went to new york to do physical therapy as soon as she was able to travel which made layla feel a certain way which we're going to get into but when we meet patients in this episode she's completely fine it's almost as if the miko incident didn't happen and we only have the news broadcast reminding us that miko is still going to be pressed and, and put on trial however it's not going to be an easy slam dunk case we have patients not being able to be on stage because she's seeing visions of miko potentially attacking her again and then we have layla and coop speaking to the time that has passed but without us actually getting to see any of it it all doesn't really feel as as heavy or as real or as great of stakes as they possibly could and again I think that patience is a great example of one of the characters that is going to suffer by way of this time jump because we didn't get to see what happened during the time jump now this doesn't mean that they're not going to do any kind of flashbacks they very well could but in the first episode we don't really get to see much except for the one with Olivia and Spencer when Spencer comes to try to help her move back after the summer is over and she does the whole um london exchange and then she decides to stay so again i think that the the time jump is really going to be a disservice for other characters we don't get to see what jordan has been doing so like one of the strong things for his character in this episode is he's jealous of the attention that spencer is getting and then towards the end of the episode he kind of backs off of that jealousy because he doesn't want the pressure that comes along with it but he hasn't really learned that being jealous is a waste of time or just a, a waste of his efforts we haven't really got gotten to see a, a, a dope true evolution from Jordan so it's like what have you been doing for the last year and three months because we're still at the same place where you're getting in your head you're getting too flustered you're getting jealous of Spencer being excellent Spencer has always been excellent since the day that you met him he has been excellent and you are still behaving like the little high school boy who wants his daddy to pay attention to him or wants the crowd to cheer his name but we're not actually getting to see you do any of the work that Spencer does to be able able to reap any of the benefits that would come with that I think that if we would have gotten to see Jordan in the last year and three months doing some work putting the work in researching watching game footage like just doing whatever he could possibly do to be the best you know d1 qb that he could possibly be then i could kind of buy into this whole storyline where we're about to go in where towards the end of this episode we get the new coach comes in and he believes that jordan is the number one asset meanwhile coach kenny is like i know how to handle our number one asset which is spencer james it's like y'all want me to believe that jordan is the number one asset but i haven't seen jordan get off his ass yet Jordan only gets off his ass when he is trying to battle Spencer, sucker punch somebody, or get married. That's it. That's the only time that Jordan gets off his ass. It's so inconsistent. It's so unbelievable. So now y'all about to sell me on the fact that Jordan actually wants to go to the NFL. Meanwhile, we don't actually get to see him do any of the things that Spencer does in his pursuit of uh, pro ballership. No. Again, the time jump is going to deserve most of these characters. Now, I think that it... it, it, it 
it's neutral for Spencer specifically because y'all can tell me that Spencer has had the best year that he has possibly ever had, um, that he is operating on all cylinders, that everything is clicking, that he is calm. Like you literally in this episode, we got to hear him say that this is the most relaxed he's ever been. Coach Kenny said this is the, the most focused and the most productive, the most excellent he has ever been. So I can actually believe that with them saying it and with us not seeing it, but that's because Spencer has already had a track record of going to work when he knew that he needs to go to work. He has a track record of being able to get into a very focused state and to be all about football and without having the main distraction that has been his distraction for the last two seasons Olivia Baker pressing on him I 100% can believe that he had the most amazing year ever even though it didn't really count too much because they were not able to compete in any type of bullshit or championship as a way of like fallout and punishment for the era that Garrett kind of had now speaking about Spencer and him having the most optimum year ever with Olivia coming back he is experiencing a ton of anxiety and nerves because he doesn't know what their relationship is going to be like he doesn't know how they're going to be and both of them were holding on to this idea of they didn't want things to change and my biggest issue with Spencer even using these words is just that change is inevitable y'all needed to change y'all's relationship prior to this did not serve you well Spencer I would go as far as to say it didn't serve Olivia well but at least you were liter literally like bending and, 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 and molding and adapting to her you were doing so much to serve her so if anybody benefited within y'all's relationship it was Olivia you on the other hand were not being met where you should have been met with were not equally yoked with your partner were not even considered so much in some of the decisions that she's made within y'all's relationship so to be holding on so deeply and so tightly to the idea that y'all's relationship can't change and y'all can't change as people to me is preposterous it's completely ridiculous and I hate the desire for you because ultimately Spencer by now you should have learned that you deserve better now and speaking about how the time jump doesn't serve a lot of the people <laughs> in this uh universe well I do and I'm going to stand behind it does serve Olivia well I do believe that she's on track to just be a completely different person but that's also because I understand what it means to leave home to go to college away even if she's like still a student at Golden Angela Southern she did this exchange program for a year and it changes you I am a big proponent and I push for children kids whoever once they're about to go to college to leave their hometown to leave their home state to go somewhere else because you will learn so much about yourself being put into a circumstance where you basically have to reconstruct yourself your life you have to come up with everything and it's all on you and that's basically what Olivia spoke to throughout this entire episode the transformational um process or experience being in London has been being that she has been all on her own having to make certain decisions for herself she not only has been able to stand up in independence and and do different things for herself but she's been able to fall in love with herself because she's had time space and uh energy to actually be alone and get to know herself in a way that allows for her to actually fall in love with herself and to me this was always inevitable I am going to go ahead and say I told you so because for all of the naysayers for all of the people who have issue with my criticism and some of the things that I've said in the past I have always pushed for this if you go back to my previous videos when I am advocating for Spencer and Olivia to break up or when I'm advocating for Spencer and Olivia to have space and time apart that to me has always been because I understand the power in giving yourself time and space to get to know yourself truly not who you are supposed to be not who society tells you to be not who your parents believe you to be but being able to actually get to know what do I like what don't I like what triggers me what excites me what draws me in what repels me that is something that nobody can actually put a price tag on and when you get placed in a circumstance or an environment that allows that to happen it can only benefit you and it can only benefit your relationships moving forward now if you do have relationships after the fact and and you decide to end those relationships or you decide that y'all can no longer be aligned even that is a good thing for you because it's coming of you deeply know yourself well enough that you know that you cannot be aligned with this person or you cannot engage with this person because it's just not in line with the person that you want to be the person that you hope to be the person that you're growing into and watching Olivia come back and then speak to how she's changed how she's grown the things that she's experienced some of the perspective shifts that she's that she's you know like I said experiencing is really great to hear because it's also put her in a place to be a little bit more giving it, it seems she made the decision solely to come back specifically for her relationship with Spencer now I don't know if that's the best decision ever but that's a different decision for her it is a less selfish decision it is a less narcissistic decision it is a, a 
decision that puts her in a place to sacrifice for Spencer, which is something that I have not seen her do as consistently as Spencer has done for her. So it was so refreshing to see. And again, I knew that if given enough time and space to come up out of y'all's Spolivia bubble and the Beverly bubble and give her time and get, like I said, space to actually cultivate some type of real self-awareness, she could get there. She could be a person that is not so steep in what about me and how I feel and what I think and what I believe is right and what I have to do. And she could take in the world a little bit better and she could navigate the world a little bit better. But prior to her moving to London, she's so heavily steeped in this life that she has known, even with the interjection or interruption of Spencer, right? Spencer ultimately just kind of started to fit into the Beverly bubble and he became less of a distraction, less of like a, a conflicting way of life and more like he molded and adapted and assimilated to the Beverly Hills lifestyle. So it became less of something that challenged what they knew and what they believed and how they actually were. And they were able to go back to their little self-centered lives. Now Olivia has now gone out into the world, has experienced life on a whole other side of the planet. And she realized how small she is and not in a way to dis diminish her, but in, in a way of just making her more worldly, making her more cognizant. The sun does not rise and set on her ass. And I'm just so grateful for it especially when she's in a relationship with someone like Spencer who will lead you to believe that the sun rises and sets on your behind because that's how he loves it's so easy for Spencer to be in a relationship with Olivia and to get taken advantage of in a certain way because of the way that he loves and now that Olivia has this different perspective she can reel it in a little bit and she can not whether intentionally or unintentionally take too much from the giver that is Spencer now where they're going to go this season and how this is actually going to play out because Olivia seems like London is calling her her. she don't actually want to be here she was talking to you know Coop and saying that she don't feel like home is actually home anymore it feels like London is home and then we get the little cryptic message from somebody named Ashley who we don't know was a girl or a boy that's telling her to hurry back so there's clearly going to be some kind of conflict there but I'm really excited to see the journey that she's going to go on one in making a decision to come back solely for Spencer and what that sacrifice feels like and how she works through it trying to prioritize her love for him but then also trying not to lose all of the growth all of the 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 meat and potatoes of the life that she has built for herself that she's also fallen in love with and then as that pertains to Spencer him also realizing that she's back and he's now going to you know potentially submit himself for the draft which could put him anywhere in the country ultimately pulling them apart again like I'm excited for them to be in this actual space now with her having a little bit more humility and a little bit more um perspective so that she's not requiring everything to come from Spencer within this relationship and now we get to see how they're going to balance their love their desires specifically their desire to be together while also handling their desires for their own personal life which should take precedence and quiet is kept they probably should just go ahead and break up because I really believe that you don't actually have to be together romantically to show up for one another in the most real honest and, and true way they do not have to romantically be together to be each other's rocks to be each other's support to actually again and just love on each other in the ways that they actually hope and I think that Coop provided a really great example of this in this episode one of the lines that she says is that she doesn't want to burden patience with her feelings and I thought that that was really powerful because too many characters within this universe are so quick to profess their love or so quick to throw their feelings onto somebody else and it's almost like they don't care what that person is dealing with they don't care what that person is struggling with they don't care what else is happening in that person's life because their feelings are the number one priority and it's like no that's not how any of this works Coop showing how she could show up for patients how she can listen to patients how she is watching patients and looking to try to fill the gaps right wherever patients needs in this first episode I thought was such a beautiful example of how you can love and not be in relationship but still feel so so closely tied and connected and and willing to support someone in a way that truly speaks to how genuine your love is if that makes sense now if you're loving the breakdown you could also become a member of the channel and check out my live reaction Reactions. I do um, watch the episode and record my reaction so you guys can check that out only on the members only tab for additional exclusive content as well as some of my notes that I take throughout the episodes those are in the members only discord feel free to support the channel if you want additional all-american um 
breakdowns, content, and just thoughts from me by signing up to be a member today. Down below next to the subscribe button should be a join button and that will tell you everything that you need to know to sign up for the memberships. Now a character I have yet to really go into yet has been Layla and I really enjoyed her character in this first episode, specifically how she handled patience and her struggle with this whole Miko trial and Miko being held accountable for attacking her in that way. I thought that it was really dope how the writers decided to display this particular storyline because it's a mirror to me for what Layla experienced with Carrie which adds a little bit of weight to how Layla didn't see it. Layla in this episode feels guilty and feels a little bit of shame because she feels like she pushed uh, patience into circumstances that basically set her up to be exploited and abused uh, by Miko. However I think the underlying thing that's also happening here is they are now prepping for patience's first performance back and for the most part Layla is not picking up on the fact that uh Patience is not actually ready to get on stage. And I would think after Layla went through what she went through with Carrie, she would be the first one to be able to spot the signs of when someone is saying that they're perfectly fine, but they're not because she lived it. And again, I think that that adds another layer of weight underneath of like, dang, how did I not spot this? Not only do I feel like I put her in this circumstance and I push her to change her image, I push her to do this, I push her to do that. But then now this is also happening. And I thought that that was really cool because it allowed us to tap back into an era within Layla's storyline that I felt like was the most iconic and Greta gave some of the most beautiful work ever in reference to the performances without actually putting Layla specifically in that circumstance. So tying those two storylines together and having um, Layla potentially even be triggered by what Patience is going through, I thought was a nod to what All American used to be and how nuanced and layered the storytelling could possibly be. Ultimately, Patience and, and Layla have a conversation where, you know, Patience affirms that you are not responsible for what Miko did, Miko is responsible for it and their love is very much so there. I thought that this was really cool because I was really expecting for us to see a lot of Layla and Jordan in this episode and I was not here for it, did not want to see it. But with Layla focusing more on launching Layla's, which is the rebrand um, after she purchased the Crenshaw Cafe uh, as a lounge, which is in Crenshaw and then, you know, relaunching patient. We don't really get to see a ton by way of their relationship. We only know that they're planning on... Um, getting married after Jordan graduated. But to go back to Jordan, in addition to him being jealous of Spencer, he also is jealous of uh, Layla's new business partner. And this is, again, another reason why I'm like, yo, Jordan is really going to struggle from this whole year time jump because it seems like he's just been sitting idle, ain't doing nothing to get better, which is not helping me root for him and Layla. I still think that Layla is too good for Jordan because why are you more concerned with proving to yourself or to whoever around you that you know more about Layla than her business partner than actually getting to the bottom of what she needs to support her during this very trying time. She's clearly experiencing anxiety, stress, and turmoil, um, trying to be the best producer, manager, whatever to patience and patience is going through whatever. And you're too focused on, well, if she would have, something would have been wrong, she would have told me as if this is about you and it's not. Y'all are not going to convince me that Jordan and, and Layla are just supposed to have and are just going to be great because in this first moment in this first episode in this premiere of season six he is not focused on fixing the problem or at least trying to fix the problem because he can't actually fix it but doing something to fix the problem he's more focused on his damn ego and his position and how it seems and one of the notes that I made about Jordan because this is what came up for me and thinking about his relationship with Layla it took me back to his relationship with Simone Jordan and Simone did not break up because of Damon Jordan and Simone did not break up because of the distance Jordan and Simone broke up because ultimately Jordan started to feel less needed by Simone and like I said Jordan is a guy who needs to be needed and it's so unfortunate in the in the midst of his relationship devolving with Simone if you think about it the relationship was devolving the more she stopped calling the more she stopped needing his advice the more that he wasn't there for her day-to-day -day crises so that he could step in and then offer advice or potentially help in some way and at the same time that that's happening Layla is needing somebody to confide in somebody to see that she's masking certain things somebody to be there at a level that's a little bit deeper than what their relationship is within their vortex so Jordan is able to find a need in another girl and then is 
losing the need in and his previous girl, which is how he was able to seamlessly shift in that way. And this makes me concerned about the Jordan and Layla relationship now because Layla is now in a season where her business partner is probably going to be providing more for her in reference to what she might need at this particular season. She's launching a new business, a, a business that's like a, a brick and mortar where people come in every day. She's going to have to manage employees and different things like that. It's not just her in a studio with particular artists, but she's literally growing her empire. And Jordan, you are a college football player. There's only so much you can do. So are you going to lose interest in Layla? Is your relationship going to devolve? Will y'all ever even make it down the aisle if it gets to the point where Layla is too self-sufficient and she don't actually need you in the ways that you need to be needed anymore? And this to me is just reaffirmed by his jealousy that he experiences with, with Spencer. Jordan is so activated externally. And when I say that, I mean he needs so much from everything outside of himself that it makes him inconsistent, but it also makes him very volatile in a very unstable place to land, whether you are a romantic partner or a friend. He does not get enough validation uh, from him within. He he does not actually value himself in a way, in a meaningful way that will provide him any type of stability as he's navigating particular stressful times or times that would make him question his ability or what he brings to the table. And ultimately, he wavers and he blows in the wind like a leaf on a, on a branch because he does not have the self-esteem and the confidence internally. And he needs to find a way to cultivate that. He needs to not be engaged right now. He needs to be in therapy. He maybe even needs to stop worrying about football so much because you ultimately only want the fruits of the labor without actually doing the labor. I am still not convinced that Jordan wants to go to the NFL. So like, let's not try to make him go to the NFL because Spencer's going to the NFL. Those are just my thoughts. Jordala fans, y'all gonna have to get y'all little prayer rags out because it's not looking good when it comes to uh, Jordan and, and what could be happening happening subconsciously. And that is again, just a note that popped up immediately for me as the episode was progressing because we're not seeing any progress within his character, within any type of um, moral paradigms that, that Jordan actually possesses. And he is so, so triggered by so many things outside of him. And it's just like, how much longer is everyone around him, everybody that loves him going to put up with the bullshit that is Jordan Baker before he has to grow up or they decide to, to leave his ass behind. In this episode, we also learned that JJ is uh, backpacking around to back on his whole Zen journey. So I guess he completely maybe paused or dropped out of college altogether. We won't actually be seeing JJ in the series anymore as Hunter, the guy who plays JJ has parted ways with the show. And I did do a video about that a few months ago when that news kind of broke. So if you want a little bit more details about that, I will link that video in the description box down below so that you can check it out. But we don't get a ton of things about JJ. And I think that that's pretty much it that catches us up. Ultimately, before the end of the episode, Spencer and Olivia wind up having an honest conversation. My only issue with the conversation is that I felt like Spencer did not speak enough. I, I appreciated everything that Olivia said about how she's different. And I appreciate to a certain extent of how Spencer is just so excited to get to know every single inch of her. But also I would have been more excited if you would have been able to communicate any type of boundary or expectations that you had Spencer my biggest problem within this Bolivia relationship is that Spencer came into it completely open raw and ready to give and Olivia at the particular season that they were in was 100% willing to take and I think that she's in a position now where she's not going to take as much and it might be a little bit balanced but him just being able to communicate what he needs what he expects so that he can stay on the ball and so that he can keep his eyes on the prize for what he wants personally would have been like the cherry on top and would have really given me a a, a a better stable place to stand and like hoping for Bolivia to be okay moving forward without him being able to actually articulate what he needs what he expects and what he's not going to actually do anymore because he realized where the downfalls were not only specifically for what he didn't do for her but what she didn't do for him I'm still looking at them on very shaky grounds because it still feels like Spencer you will throw your whole life away including your future just for a moment a glimpse of happiness for Olivia which she might not actually even want in the way that you want to give it to her and that just sends us back down the spiral road that I don't want to be on so I'm watching Olivia and I'm kind of squinting but overall I'm proud of where Olivia is entering season six at 
She's shifting in a little bit. I'm not mad at her. I'm not calling her Liv as of right now. I'm going to keep calling her Olivia because she still got a little bit more work to do. But we here. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button down next to where the subscribe button is. But you can also hit if you have not subscribed and you're new to the channel. I thank you so much for watching. Be on the lookout for my additional All-American content and videos dropping. I am going to be dropping new All-American videos every single day and then even more content for members. So check out the membership if you want all there is to know about All-American. It's your good sis you love to talk TV with and I'm gonna see you in the next one.